Hello everyone, it's Leslie Schreiner and I'm going to teach you a little bit about rotating, uh, rotating the coat on a standard schnauzer. So this is a young dog. He's nine and a half, ten months old. He's in his first show coat. Um, and so one of the dilemmas that you have for the first time you strip a puppy is, you know, you strip out the puppy coat and then they have a nice coat that comes in underneath, but it's all pretty much one length and it can look great. We, we had a, we had a good show back at the beginning of the month, but <clears throat> the hardest coat to rotate is one that's all the same length because I once heard, uh, rotating the coat described as pull every 17th hair every two weeks and as ridiculous as that sounds that's kind of what you have to do <clears throat> but that's hard to do because all the coats the same length how do you just pick a little bit so what i'm going to show you today is a technique that i have learned that i use so it's controversial some people will disagree some people will say you should never do this and that's fine anybody who doesn't feel comfortable with this technique doesn't have to use it but i've used it for many years to help me with hands uh, with rotating the coat and it's been really helpful so what the technique is is i bathe the dog and then i let the coat just dry on its own and all the stuff that's longer than the hair around it will cowlick. You can see, I think, you can see that along his top line, well, let's lower it down so you can see it a little bit. Along the top line, it's bushy. And around his neck, there's some bushiness. And there's not too much hair on the shoulder, but what there is, bathing it lifts causes that hair to lift. Now, you once you once you bathe the dog for this purpose, you want to go ahead and do the stripping that you're going to within a couple of days <clears throat> because the coat starts laying back down. At least a good hard coat does. This technique is probably less useful for uh, dogs with softer coat, but dogs with hard coat, it works quite well. So now I have some idea of what to pull. Before the bath, everything just looked really tight and you know, looked like, oh, he could go in the ring and he could. But since I haven't worked the coat in about a month, if I let it keep going, then I'm gonna have to start from scratch in the spring or whenever I decide to do it. And that might mean that I missed some shows that would be good for him. I don't really know the show schedule that I'm gonna be um, doing over the next two, three, five, six months. So it's better if I just go ahead and get the coat started to rotate so that I have more options. Okay, so to work this coat with its some bushy spots, um, I'm gonna put a little ear powder in the uh, coat you can also use chalk, but ear powder is the, the best. And it, I put it in there because it helps make the hair more grippy. It makes it easier for me to grip the hair. The one downside of bathing him is that <clears throat> clean coat is harder to pull. Um, and a dirty coat is the easiest to pull. So... He's just been bathed, so his coat is going to be a little tough to grip. So I'm just rubbing a little bit of ear powder in there. Maybe I'll sprinkle a little on there. All right. And, and actually putting in some ear powder also helps lift some of the coat so that I can see what to do. Now, before I bathed him, it was really hard. I could lift up a little bit of hair and see what was long, but it was going to be a really slow and exacting process. Now that I've bathed him, the longer coat just stands right up. Obviously it does here, but even on the sides, 
So that makes it a lot easier for me to, to do that, that thing of <laughs> theoretically pulling every 17th hair. Because maybe that's about the proportion of what's long enough for me to pull. Now, it's particularly important that you rotate this lower area here along near where your skirt's going to be because that hair grows the slowest. And that's the one, that, that's the hair that if you let it go for two, three months and then you're like, oh, I want to get ready to show, maybe you still have coat growing in everywhere else or it'll grow back in quickly, but you don't have hair down here and it, it gives a less competitive result. You want consistent coats, consistent color, as much as you can. So the first area that I'm going to pull a little bit is these hairs that are standing up, up out of the coat a little, right down here by the skirt. It takes about three months for the hair that you pull in this area to grow back in to be a good length to have some color in the show ring or to have consistency if you just want to have a nicely groomed um, performance dog or a pet. So there is definitely a little layer here that I can see, I can feel, I can strip out. And I'm staying in the center section and I'm going to move my way up a little bit at a time. Um, I really like to use a stone stripper. Um, this dog has a hard coat, but it's a little fine. So the coat can tend to be a little brittle and easy to break. So if I'm using a knife, a metal knife, I'm more likely to break it. Also, puppy coats are a little finer to begin with. He should get a thicker, heavier coat as uh, he cycles into his adult hair. So I don't have to worry about breaking coat. Breaking coat is the antithesis of rotating coat. You think you're rotating the coat because the hair gets shorter, but then when it starts growing in, you're wondering why it, you're losing the salt and pepper and you're getting a uniform gray and you wonder why it's getting softer. So that's why I like to use a stone for almost everything now. And certainly for any beginners out there, that's really what I recommend. I don't even, I don't even tell people that I'm teaching who are learning how to do this, I don't even introduce them to metal knives for quite a while because they just don't need it. If you're just starting out, you don't need it. Okay, so now I've worked up to about here. Let's see, there's a little bit more in, this, in the tenders area right in here. Trying to be out of the way of the camera. Now, I'm doing this pretty fast, and partly I can do that because I can see that the layer is pretty sparse, but also I'm doing it fast because I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure. I'm not holding the stone tightly. If I do that, then I'm gonna have a tendency to grab too much hair, pull hard, put a hole in, the dog will be complaining because that's uncomfortable. So, uh, to slow it down, just if this is one of your first times watching and uh, you're just learning the technique of hand stripping, um, I lift the coat up and the longest hairs, I grip the hair between the stone and my thumb. I hold the skin above so it's a little taut. That helps the hair pull out easier. And I just pull a little at a time. That's maybe a dozen hairs. Pull a little at a time. Just what's the longest. There's no rush. And in fact, especially with a younger dog, if you get a dog that's really fussy while you're stripping, 
it's probably because you're going too fast and he's a little overwhelmed or you're trying to pull too much hair at a time and that's a little too uncomfortable. Okay, now I'm getting into this longish part that I didn't realize how long that this, this had gotten, how long his top line had actually gotten to be. And when the top line starts to get long, you get, you tend to get waves in it for some kinds of coats. You tend to get either these kind of side to side waves or up and down waves and your top line isn't straight anymore. And you're like, how do I fix that? And mostly you fix it by just picking at it a little at a time, which you're not able to do if a whole bunch of it's long. Now, I did start raking him out before I section stripped him to get his first show coat. So there is a layer coming in underneath. And generally the top line has the hardest and thickest hair. It's the easiest to pull without breaking. So um, it's easy to have a little more of a layer coming in along the top line. I know, buddy. You're a good boy. Now, I'm not digging into the whole cowlick because I don't want to create a hole. I am still just pulling the very tip, basically the black tip of the hair shaft is all that I'm putting my, my thumb over and that keeps me pulling a smaller amount. Now, the reason that I'm I'm focusing on the middle section first is because just like I said down here, this grows the slowest down at the skirt. The whole middle section grows slower than everywhere else. So if there's a chance that I won't be able to groom the whole dog in this one setting, then I will have worked the area that grows the slowest. And that means that I won't have the problem of if I were to strip the, the rear or the shoulders first and not come back to it, by the time I get this area stripped and by the time it grows back in, now this area and this area would be too long. So I try to work top line, center section first. And even when I'm rotating the coat, I basically use the same um, delineations that I do when I'm section stripping. And uh, I do have another video with the section stripping and uh, I recommend watching that for a little bit more of the why on, on doing that. Good boy. Good boy. Now there's a lot to do here still so for the sake of, uh, sake of time, I'm going to move on to a different area, but know that if you were working this doll yourself, you'd want to get the top line and obviously the other side um, down a little bit. Now, if you're not sure how much to take, you're better off taking a little bit less then a little bit more, unless you know your, when your next show is. And in that case, you might need to take a little more to get the top line to look nice. So I wouldn't pull all of this out anyway, this sitting, because there is quite a bit of it. And again, if I pull it all at one time, it's going to grow back in all at one time and that's not rotating the coat and that's making it really, it's shortening the amount of time that I can have the dog in the ring before he goes out of coat. And that can be really frustrating to be, to finally get your dog and yourself together in the ring, get your partnership going, your teamwork going, start to get competitive. And just when you're really starting to get competitive and win, the dog goes out of coat, and then you gotta start over. 
Okay. So I got a whole lot of this cow licky stuff out. And in two weeks, if I bathe them again, more stuff, different stuff will stand up. And I'll be able to keep working that top line so that more hair just keeps coming in. Um, I like to work a rotating coat ideally every week or two, realistically for me. Two, two weeks is my ideal. Sometimes I have to go four. Um, this month got away from me because COVID finally caught me and sat me down for a while. Um, and so I got a little behind. All right, so now I've got a little bit of longer hair here on the shoulders. So I'm just gonna lightly, lightly pull that. So I've got some new coat coming in on the shoulders. It's gonna take about three months for the hair that I pulled today to be a relevant length for showing. Um, so, that's the other thing you have in mind. You're thinking about when, when am I stripping him for? Are you stripping him? If you're stripping him for maintenance and you don't have a show scheduled plan, but you know that you will at some point, so you're, you're stripping for maintenance, then I leave it a little longer. I don't take it quite as aggressively, depending on the area. I might also use that as an opportunity to take something shorter that I normally wouldn't because of being afraid of putting a hole in. And one of those areas is gonna be right here at the transition from the neck to the shoulder. And he's got some nice, nice sticking up hair here now. Before the bath, all of that was laying really flat and it was really hard to tell which hair was longer. Now, since what you want on this area is a nice slope, from the neck into the body, like, like this. Let's see if you can see that. Then this hair at the at the the farthest point forward of the body, the lowest point of the neck, that hair has to be the longest. Or you lose that nice slope and you get an L shape in the dog, and that will make even a square dog look long. So, and a long dog look longer. So since I know that I won't be showing again for at least two months, maybe even three, now is actually a good time to strip this hair in that longest section because it'll have the longest amount of time to grow back in. This area grows faster than this area but it's still kind of the same thing. To get it to the competitive length that I want, it's gonna take longer, so I need to strip it earlier in the process. And this is the one area, if I know I've got a few months, two or more months, that I'll go ahead and just pull it fairly aggressively because I got plenty of time for it to grow back in. If I'm actively showing, this is an area that I pick like three hairs at a time, super slow, so that I make sure I don't mess up my top line. But I want to give that hair plenty of time to grow in so I can have the nice slope that I want when I'm showing it. Okay, so there's a few other areas where I can see there's cowlicks, where the hair is a little longer on the shoulder here. There's a nice little patch right here. So those are all areas I'm gonna to work tonight after, after we're done here with the video. Um, there's a little bit of fluff here at the base of the tail and, and his head needs a little bit of work. He's got a layer on top and he's got a nice 
short layer underneath I can see really well. So that's another area that I'm going to put a little time into. So you can decide for yourself if bathing is something that you want to do to help lift the coat so that you have an easier time seeing what is longer. So what can be pulled a little at a time so you can start rotating. Um, you know, it, it isn't what works for everyone and a lot of people have never done it. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to try something new, but this has really worked for me. Now, the one thing I do want to make sure to say is if you have, you do want to have a hard coated dog and I try to never do this in less than two weeks before a show, two to three weeks is because I want it all to finish laying back down. And on a hard-coated dog, that can take two to three weeks. So, I don't want him to be fluffy and puffy when I'm showing him in the ring. But, now, when I'm in a holding pattern for, um, for maintenance, then it's fine. Puffy's fine. Doesn't hurt anything, in my opinion. Okay, so then, then I'm just... Going to spend a little more time here after the video pulling the stuff that uh, that I can lift up or comb up. That's the other thing. If there's an area that you, you're, you've worked it, but you're like, I still didn't take all that much hair off. I want to get a little more hair off so more is growing in, in, uh, you know, in the next few months. Then you can back comb it and that lifts like a whole nother sparse layer up that you can Pick with the stone or with your fingers. But I definitely want this middle section to have plenty of hair to be growing in in a few months so that when I have to pull what's long, there will be something underneath. Okay, I hope that's helpful. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments and I'd be happy to address them. And also just want to let you know that um, I'm going to be offering in 2023 a lot more in the way of uh, private grooming sessions and some group workshops. So watch out for those opportunities and I will put more information out there closer to the time. Oh, aren't you sweet? Thank you. And thank you. Let me know what you think. Give me your feedback.